Welcome to this video. I've had a lot of people reach out and ask, how do these workbenches and FreeCAD work together, right? Um, and, and if you're new, it can be really confusing to know how part design works with part, works with draft, works with any other workbench. So let's try to clear that up today. Now, what I'm going to go through is kind of an arbitrary topic. So I'm going to do my very best to do it justice and uh, explain it well, but there's a lot of angles that you can come at this with, and this is just one of many. So I'm probably more explaining how I personally use the workbenches together. So uh, the, if you're gonna go hammer out a model, your main ones are gonna be part and part design. And, and you have to ask, how do these work together? So I'm gonna start with part design. If you're brand new, I suggest working with part design for a lot of reasons. Part design feels a lot like SolidWorks, Onshape, Creo, NX, right? It's, it, it has a modern feeling to it and it's really straightforward. So if you're brand new, stick with part design until um, you start mastering other workbenches, but this one should be the most straightforward for you. I'm gonna create a sketch and notice as I do, um, in fact, if I just close a part without saving, create a new part, right? And you're in part design, your first option is create body. And that's really important in part design uh, because whenever you're working in part design, um, as part of your tree, you have something called body. And we're gonna pay attention to that. So if I create a body, notice my sketch that I'm making is a subset of my body, right? It's contained within my body. If I close this and create a pad, so I have a body, a solid body that I'm looking at. Well, let's say I wanna create two bodies. Uh, if I delete my pad and I edit my sketch and I create my second one over here and I close and I create a pad, uh, when I try to create this pad, I get an error that says results has multiple solids. This is not supported at this time. And what it's telling you is I can't have two separate bodies or two separate solids that is labeled as one body. So if I edit my sketch, get rid of this, and then I do my pad, and then I create a separate body, right? I come up here and it says, create a new body and make it active. So I click on this and now a new body shows up in my tree. And this is my active body now. And if I choose the same plane that I sketched on and I do quote unquote the same sketch, we close, we pad, well now I've got two bodies and there's no error. So part design isn't telling you that you can't do multiple solids. It's telling you you can't do multiple solids under a single body, right? Now, if I wanna go back and edit this body, let's say I highlight this edge and I click on the fillet, selection is not in an active body. So I double click on my body, oh, and I have to select an edge, and now I can edit that, right? So you switch between your active bodies by double, double clicking on them. So that is how to multi-body model in part design. I also have a video on how to use a shape binder if you wish to reference geometry from one body to another in part design. Now the key is when using part design, if you can do part design to add a feature, do it. Because if you go to another workbench, to add a feature onto something that's part design. There's no problem with doing that, but you can't go back and add on part design again. And I'll show you that because it may be confusing if I just say it without doing it, you know? So if I go to add, go to part workbench and I wanna add a fillet onto here, well, I do suggest using fillets in part design if you can, right? As I just have done, <laughs> but, um, Let's say I want to add a feature from the part workbench. In this case, it's a fillet, right? Uh, will it work? And it does. But if I look at my tree, now I have body, body 001, and fillet. And this is very interesting. Um, this body is, of course, this body here in part design. So what I've done is when I've added my fillet in the part workbench, it created what you would think of as yet another body now you can use the space bar to toggle visibility. And so indeed, if I hide this, 
right? If I toggle the visibility on my pad body, there we go. There's my body without the fillet. And so when I edit something from part design in a workbench that isn't part design, it makes it its own solid. And if I try to go and take my edited solid back into part design, and let's say I want to add a fillet from part design, I highlight my edge and it says select an edge face or body from an active body. And I say, okay, I know how to make a body active. So I double click on my fillet, but it goes to edit my fillet, right? And what I've really done is broken the link to part design when I've edited something from the part workbench on something that was made in part design. So the minute you, you add a feature from a workbench that isn't part design, it becomes its own body and you can't go back to part design and edit it, right? You, you only have your original body that was quote unquote duplicated, if you will. So that is how part design interacts with the other workbenches. I hope that's clear. If I make something in the part workbench, let's try that. The part workbench is an older workbench that is more original to the original FreeCAD. And um, you can use the part workbench to make something from sketches, right? Uh, and I can make some crazy sketch if I wanted to, right? Like a crazy B spline sketch. So I just made a sketch, whatever you want, come over to part and we can extrude just like we did in part design. Now, if I try to go to part design, highlight an edge and fill it, you will probably not be surprised to see that there's no active body. That's because uh, part design won't edit something made in the part workbench. So if you make something in the part workbench or any other workbench, part design will not edit it. So your hard and fast rules so far kind of are, if it's made in the part design workbench, you can edit it with other workbenches. You just can't go back to part design afterwards and modify it. If you make something that's not in part design, you can edit it in pretty much any other workbench, but you can't do it in part design. So let's head on over to something like the draft workbench. Um, and if I make a sketch, right, and I choose OK, and say I make a big arc, and I have a smaller arc that I'll connect to this point, right? So I have this crazy kind of arc things. Well, if I go to the draft workbench, and this was made in the part workbench, the draft workbench just has a bunch more features that you won't find in the part workbench. So one of these is like a copies of selected objects along a selected path. Actually, I should close my tasks here and I should highlight this and then highlight my sketch. And then we'll create copies along a path, right? Um, so I can duplicate these objects on the path that I chose. Now I didn't have this arc highlighted, so I don't think that that's included in my path. If I want to include it in my path, then I wouldn't normally go through all this, but I did label this as a beginner video. So if I want to do this, then I would highlight both of these with the control key selected, of course. And if I come along here, now, now that second arc is included in my path and I can come down here and change my count to like 10 objects and I hit the rebuild button. Right, so if I make it, here, here's the hard and fast rule. If I make it in the part workbench, probably any other workbench will be able to edit it. Likewise, there are some add-in workbenches. I particularly enjoy the curved shapes workbench. And if I make something in the curved shape workbench, I can edit that in the part and uh, the draft workbench and anything else that I really want to. So if I put it simply, if I make something in the part design workbench, I should keep editing it in the part design workbench unless I absolutely have to change. If I make it in the part workbench, then it will work with any other workbench probably instead of part design. Now those are very general statements um, because there are some workbenches that, you know, are just put an image on a plane that don't apply to that, right? So uh, <laughs> those aren't hard and fast rules, but more guidelines. Um, well, I'll go through one more thing. 
So here I have like the gear workbench, right? And if I want to uh, generate an involute gear, then I can. And you can see, you can just double click on something in the tree and add it. And so, you know, I've made this from the gear workbench and this was made in the part workbench and it was patterned in the draft workbench. And uh, if I want to edit this, right, I'll double click and I'll get it so just so that these bodies collide. And if I want to do a Boolean subtraction where I take this gear and subtract it from this body, no problem, right? I hold, I highlight, I highlight this body, hold control, highlight this gear. And if I do a Boolean subtraction and the part workbench, that would be this button here, make a cut of two shapes. Well, now I've just cut out that gear from this body. And so they'll, you know, the workbenches that aren't part design interact with each other really well. So if it's made in part, really don't worry about the compatibility. If it's made in part design, don't worry about the compatibility, but know if you edit it with anything else, it can't be re-edited in part design. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.